Personal access tokens, or PATs, are an alternative to using passwords for authentication to GitHub when using the GitHub API or the command line. Until now, personal access tokens only allowed for very coarse, high-level permissions. With the public beta of fine-grained PATs, you now have the ability to provide more granular control over the permissions and repository access for your PATs. Want to learn more? Hey y'all, I'm Mickey Gousset, and today I wanted to give you an introduction to fine-grained personal access tokens in GitHub. First, let's get some of the naming convention out of the way. The old way of handling personal access tokens is still there, but it is now referred to as Personal Access Tokens Classic, and the new, currently public beta, fine-grained personal access tokens are just called Personal Access Tokens, or PATs. So, what were some of the problems with classic pats that we are trying to fix? For starters, the permissions you can grant classic pats are rather coarse, meaning you might have to give the personal access token more access than you really want to in order to achieve your goals. Another potential problem area is that a classic pat is granted access to all the repositories and organizations that the owning user can access. And the organization owners have no control or visibility into this. With fine-grained personal access tokens, you can choose from over 50 granular permissions that control access to GitHub's organization, user, and repository APIs, and each permission can be granted no access, read, or read-write. They have to expire and can only access repositories and organizations that you grant them access to. Now, there's more to the story, but that's enough to get us started. Let's go see how you can create one of these new personal access tokens. So let's look at how we create these new tokens. To get started, I'm logged into GitHub, and I can go to the top right and select my user, and go to settings, and then scroll down. At the very bottom, there's developer settings. Now under developer settings, I have a personal access token section, and if I click into that section, I see two options. One is tokens classic. As we mentioned, this is how you go and create tokens the original way. And there's still some reasons right now why you need to use classic tokens versus fine-grained tokens. There are still some things you can't do yet with fine-grained tokens. That information is in the docs. However, we want to create a fine-grained token. So we select fine-grained token. As you can see, as of this recording, it's still in beta. And inside the fine grain tokens, you can see that we have a generate new token. Awesome. So let's go generate a new token. So I need to give this token a name. So we'll call this Mickey's first fine grain token pat. Now, the token has to expire. You can see I can select a custom date, but I can't go more than, I believe, a year out. So if we change this to be Let's say we try to set this to 12-31-2020-2024. Let's try again, 2024. I don't think it's gonna actually let me save that. It's gonna probably, it's gonna block it. So instead, let's change this to where, eh, we only need this token for 30 days. And you can see that it will set to expire 30 days from now. We can give this token a description for what it's used for, just to test. And I can specify who the resource owner is. For example, in this case, the token can be just directly under my user account, or I could be making this token to access one of the other organizations I have access to. Now, depending on the organizational permissions, an organizational owner might actually have to approve the token before I can use it. But we'll look at that in a later video. For now, we'll just say I'm the resource owner. And then we can select repository access and permissions. For example, I could create this token to only access public repositories in a read-only fashion. And then you can see the permissions that I have in that case are, you know, be able to access email addresses, followers, gists, things like that. However, I can also say 
that this token can access all repositories owned by me, let's say. Now in this case, I can then specify the repository permissions. For example, can I, ask, can I do anything with actions? And my options are no access, read only, read write. And by default, it's no access. And you can see we have lots of granular ways to set permissions on the repositories. And then back to account permissions, which we saw earlier, I can also set account permissions on that personal access token. And then we go to generate the token. Notice this token will be ready for immediate use because I'm not adding it to an organization that has to do any kind of approval. So I'll select generate token. Now, here is my token, right? So obviously you need to copy it right now because you won't ever have access to it again. And of course, if I come over here to and click on fine green tokens, then I can see there's my token and it shows me that it was never used. And I'm going to delete this so that nobody watching this on YouTube tries to use my token. And there you go. An introduction to how you create fine grain tokens. I hope you've enjoyed this video on an introduction to fine grained personal access tokens. If so, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and smash that bell to be notified of my next video. Thanks for watching.